Hallian 6 is about exploring creative boundaries. That might be picking up an old instrument, recording it, and turning that into a sample library that you can trigger at any point in time. In this video, we're going to take a look at the mixer, and we're not going to mix in a traditional sense. We're going to look at how the mixer has been developed to be an incredible tool for sound design. And most importantly, we're going to look at how the mixer and the program tree work hand in hand to provide incredibly flexible routing options for any stage of the sound design process. I'm going to start at the very beginning with an empty Hallian 6. We've just got an empty shell. And this is the perfect place to start to have a look at the basic foundation of the Hallian 6 mixer. I've got the mixer tab selected, which gives me access to the Hallian 6 mixer. Along the top, we've got these icons, which represent different sections or controls in the mixer. I've got the slot bus selected, but you'll notice there's nothing inside the mixer. And that's because there's no program loaded in the slot rack over here on the left hand side. Moving over to the right, we've got the four auxiliary channels. We can assign individual outputs to each one of these auxiliary channels. Each auxiliary channel has eight insert slots. In every section of the mixer, you can expand and collapse these insert slots by using these two icons. The next section is the output bus section. There's 32 stereo outputs and a six channel surround sound output. Again, each of these channels has eight insert slots but you can expand just one channel by clicking on the triangle at the top of a channel. This is the only place you'll see no output routing options here, and that's because this is the final stop. This is the end of the massive signal path in Hallian. Moving over again, we've got the child bus. The child bus shows all of the buses that can be found inside a selected program or layer hierarchy. Finally, we've got the depending bus section, and this is going to represent whatever we're working on inside the program tree. Currently, there's just a program bus, which comes inside every program layer. Let's start by dragging an empty program from the program table over into the slot rack. Now we've got an empty program in the slot rack and two extra channels in our mixer view. These three channels represent the signal flow through the program tree, down into the program bus, out of the program bus, into the new slot bus channel, which was created when we dragged a new program into the slot rack, into the output bus, which is our final destination. Although it's completely flexible, we can change destination at any point in time just by changing the outputs at the top of each channel. We can even take an express route to the output channel just by bypassing the slot bus. This gives us some idea of how incredibly flexible this mixer actually is. The good news is we've only just started scratching the surface. This is the foundation of the mixer. Now let's go to the program tree and put some sound through what we've got so far. Over in my program layer, I'm going to create a new layer to keep things organized. Inside that layer, I'm going to start with a very simple synth zone. Straight up, we've got a basic synth sound with three oscillators. There are videos on the YouTube channel that show you how to create a sound from scratch. So for now, I'm going with a simplistic synth sound and I'm going back up to the mixer tab so we can really focus on the mixer section inside Hellion. We have sound now, so we can have a basic look at how sound flows through the program tree. Instinctually, the first place you would add an insert might be in the program bus. So I'm adding a delay into the first slot. Now I can start to edit the parameters of this delay. The moment I added that delay, an option appeared to open up the folder over in the program tree. If I open up the program bus, I can see the delay listed there. Another way to add an effect into this bus is to use the icon in the toolbar. I've added a studio EQ, which also now shows up in the second slot of the program bus in the mixer section. So you can also add inserts over in the program tree. So the signal is flowing through the program bus into the slot bus. Now I'm adding a reverb into the slot bus, which comes after the program bus stage in the signal flow. As it stands, the final destination is the output bus. And at the risk of sounding repetitive, again, we've got another eight insert slots. And that's just on this master channel that we've currently got the program bus and the slot bus routed to. The final piece of the master section of this mixer is of course the four auxiliary sends. And I can use one of these inserts to create a send to one of the four auxiliary channels. 
I just go down to the bottom folder and choose the auxiliary channel. Because we're in the depending bus section of the mixer, that auxiliary send has immediately become visible. If I just want to see the auxiliary sends, I simply need to go over to the auxiliary send section. We have another eight inserts on the auxiliary send, and of course we can start editing the parameters, change the level of the auxiliary send channel, or even just change the send amount. As I said before, each auxiliary channel has its own independent outputs. So I can send the output of the auxiliary channel to a new master output channel, which will show up in this section of the mixer, and I've got another eight insert options. If I close it, of course, the output channel disappears from this section of the mixer. So far, we've covered the absolute basics of the Hallian mixer. We've had a really good look at the flexible foundation of the Hallian mixer and how you can use different views to get access to critical components of the sound design process. To remove an insert, select None from the Insert drop-down menu. Click on the button just to the left of the insert to disable it. And again, use the triangles at the top of each channel to expand and collapse the insert view. While I'm still in the mixer's depending bus section, let's go over to the program tree and start working from over there. I've selected the first layer and I'm adding a bus, and immediately a bus has appeared in the mixer. Now I'm adding an insert to that bus, which is housed inside of layer one. When it comes to sound design, we can create layer upon layer. Hellion already has five different zones that we can combine to make complex sound. When you consider that we can just continually add buses into the program tree with eight inserts, a whole sonic universe starts to open up in front of us. It's a universe which is unparalleled in terms of software design and flexibility, and more importantly, sound creation, which is what Hellion 6 is designed for. And that's enough of the deep universal stuff from me. In the meantime, I've added a third insert, which is a wah. Now, if I don't like where that insert is sitting in the actual signal flow, I can just pick up on it and drag it up the order. You can also copy and paste in between different buses, as you would with a word processor, just by holding down Alt or Option. You can access a contextual menu by right mouse clicking in the program tree. Now I'm using the new submenu to add bus 1, which has appeared over in the mixer section. Just to clear up any confusion, these auxiliary buses are different to the master auxiliary bus sections. These are called local buses and they sit inside of folders. Right mouse click on the folder layer bus, go down to sends at the bottom and select the auxiliary channel you want to access. Now that auxiliary channel is visible over in the mixer, and there's an auxiliary send that's been added to the fourth insert slot on my layer bus. I'm adding a reverb. I've created my very own mixer microcosm inside of this first layer, which is housed inside of the program layer. And I can start to make more and more layers and mix environments inside these layers to add more complexity to the sound. This video isn't about generating sound or tones. It's about understanding the flexibility of the mixer. So let's quickly just create another very simple layer. I'm using the organ zone, so we can compare two layers side by side. I'm soloing the organ zone and I'm just quickly bringing in some harmonics. I might add a flex phraser just for a point of difference. So I'm adding a MIDI module into that zone. I'm going back up to the Mixer tab and highlighting layer 2. And now I've got exactly the same structure as I had when I created the first layer. Program bus, slot bus, master output bus. I'm going to add a new layer bus inside layer 2. Now it's a matter of adding effects. One of the really cool things about Hellion 6 is that it contains the Hellion 3 legacy plugins. And these things are retro and cool. Make sure you take a couple of hours to work your way through these guys. We can continue to add inserts into this layer bus, but for demonstration purposes, let's create another auxiliary bus. I'm adding the insert into the auxiliary bus channel. And once again, I'm going with the legacy plugins. Now it's just a matter of creating a send. Back to the layer bus, right mouse click, new. We can only choose effect, go to send, auxiliary effect one. One other point that's worth mentioning is that every time you add an insert, you can save a preset over in the top right hand side. You can also recall a number of factory presets. 
That makes sound design a lot easier if you're just starting out. The program tree is not just for viewing the architecture of the sound design or tone generation inside our program. We can get a great idea of the signal flow. We can also show and hide views. And let's not forget that at the start of this video, we looked at what comes after the program bus, and that's the slot bus, the master bus, and the four master auxiliary send buses. It sounds like a proper marketing pun to say the possibilities really are limitless, but every time I use this, I'm completely blown away by just how far you can take sound design, and I'm sure I'm only using a very small part of it so far. It's about being as creative as possible with these tools. Now, just to take you back to a concept that we started with, and that's the slot bus. If you're like me, you may have wondered why there was even a slot bus section to the mixer to start with. Well, as you can see, I'm building program upon program upon program in the slot rack. Each of these programs can have different layers with different zones, with different MIDI modules, with different mixing microcosms, and really the possibilities are limitless in terms of creating a massive multi-timbral, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. Can I say universe again, or is that too cheesy? You can save each individual program when you finish sound design, which for demonstration purposes doesn't make me much of a Sonic God universe creator, because at the moment I've got program three selected and the universe that I created was in program one. Anyway, you can add different characteristics to this save program so that it will show up in the media bay. Check out the YouTube channel for the video on working with multi-programs. And finally, I think I may have pulled the universe card out a little bit too early, because of course Hellion 6 can be hosted inside all major doors. Whilst I'm mixing the instrument inside of the box, I can right mouse click on virtually any parameter to assign it to an automation lane. I can press right and start to work with the parameter, which of course I can edit after I've finished this take. I could go on for days, weeks, months even about Hallion, but YouTube wouldn't let me and you've probably got other things to do. So let me show you one final important piece of information on the Hallion mixer, and that is activating all the channels so that you can send each individual channel directly to a channel inside your doors mixer. In Cubase, I'm activating all the outputs of the instrument, and then I go to Hallion and I'm selecting an individual output channel. All of the effects that we added inside of Hallion, all of the flexible routing options still remain the same because it's only the output bus that we're stemming or directing into an individual Cubase channel. As I said, well, there's a whole Hallion 6 universe out there and there's plenty more information on how you can be more creative with Hallion on our YouTube channel. Go and hit the subscribe button or reach out to us on social media for more information and more tips on how you can be more creative.